Mailbag time. I've got something special in this box. This is from Fluke or Pomona. One of them. Stick around and see what this is. We'll work through these things first. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like mailbag videos or electronic stuff in general or repairs and what have you. If I'm lucky I'll get into this box. I hate when I tape them up like this. Oh wow. <laughs> um, batteries which have all just fallen out. Let's just do this. Right. Some more? Yes. More there. So this is the weirdest thing, right? I've been trying to buy little lithium cells. It's, it's a lithium thigh now or something, I think they're called. Backup batteries for test equipment. You know, you want to uh, replace a battery because it's getting a bit old, what have you. I've tried to buy them from Element 14. One shipped them to me because they had to come from Australia because there's no local distributor here. Okay, tried RS Components. No. I've tried another company which is over in the UK. It was actually in Ireland. They had some quite nice range there. And I've, okay, I'll try them in case they've got so different rules. No. So it seems that it's almost impossible to buy backup batteries in New Zealand because nobody wants to post them to you. Rant over, kind of. These are from China. China will send them to you. In bubble wrap. <laughs> Let's check some of these voltages, make sure you look alright. First battery. 3.67. 3.67. 3.67. 3.67. 3.67. 3 I'm not measuring backwards every single time. <laughs> 3.67 come on do one right way around Scott no 3.67 there you go 3.67 these all look fine 3.67 so I've ordered some different types these are obviously the like half AA I think they're called 3.6 volt versions 3.67 I'm going to have to obviously do something to make sure these don't get shorted out or anything 3.67 and 3.67 Oh good. So all the different ones. I've got this style, I've got some two thirds AA, AA size, and I think there's another type as well. So I've got a few different ones and obviously these are ones which have arrived so far, so I need to be careful about not shorting these out together. So I need to uh, do something about that. Yeah, to get them from China, that's ridiculous. I would like to buy them somewhere like Element 14 or Iris Components, I would like to buy them. I mean obviously they can be posted, I just don't want to do it. And these are lithium final, they're not high output, these are long life. So you short one of these things out, probably nothing will happen. You know? It's not like they're high capacity or you know, high amperage kind of devices like general lithium cells. These are meant for long life. So they'll sit there for twenty years before they go flat, kind of thing. So I don't understand what the paranoia is about on these. They're not a lithium iron cell, it's a lithium thionyl cell. It's different technology. Anyway. Never mind. If you know of a decent source in New Zealand where I can get these things, let me know. But um, I've got a bunch because I thought right, I'll take a chance. I'll get a bunch now because who knows, maybe it's going to get even harder to get them. This should last me quite a long time. I mean, this thing's last for decades. right? So I could put this in my drawer. Ten years later, it'll still be fine. So that's why I've got a bunch of them because you know you never quite know what you're going to need. You, know, you might have to stick some in parallel or what have you in order to get some extra capacity or whatever. Who knows? Yeah, rant over. Don't forget to check out my playlist at the end of this video. I've got other mailbag videos or repairs or whatever. If you're new to the channel, you may be interested in those. All the old timers will know about them already. I don't just do mailbag, I do lots of other stuff. A couple of speakers. 4 iron 5 watt. Looks like about 3 inches. There's a couple of those in there. And these ones look like about 4 inches. 8 ohms is text there. So these are just basically just really cheap speakers. They're not meant to be good quality, they're just meant for a function. And that function is to replace speakers in CB radios. So I've got some radios which I've had as spare parts, right? And I've actually been stealing parts off them over the years, and they're still mostly complete, but there's some I want to repair and get them working again, but I've nicked the speakers. So I've got, I think, three radios, I think, which have got no speakers in them, but got a potentially capable of working, so trying to find this kinds of speakers just I don't know why it's so hard to find them now I've actually tried about three times to buy speakers and the first two times they never arrived not from this set of them from someone else and uh, anyway I finally got some turn up been trying now for well I don't know six months anyway we've got them now hmm. 
Okay. Do you think the packaging is somewhat excessive? <laughs> so this is a spring clip. I think they're the same. They say they're red, but they're actually blue. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, 16 position dip. Red? No, they're definitely blue. Unless I'm going colour blind suddenly. I'm pretty sure that's red over there and this is blue. So yeah, these are 16 pin dip clips. Now I have a plan for these. Don't worry Mr B, I have a cunning plan to solve the problem. I have built, as I've mentioned several times, anyone has been around for the channel for a little while now, my little prototype here for testing DRAM chips. So the PCBs arrived from PCB Way from my DRAM project. That occurred to me that that circuit could be modified very slightly and actually do in-circuit testing. Now I know in circuit testing is something you can't normally do because what will happen is you're trying to power the entire circuit because all the chips are in parallel with each other and what that changes the chip select pin or whatever it is may be, right? So you can't actually do normal in circuit testing but I thought of a way that might work. It won't be 100% perfect but it is a method of testing which could potentially throw faults up if used correctly. So I thought I may just get some of these clips. These are quite expensive actually. I think it's like... $30 each or something, really expensive. But the idea is you clip this onto DRAM chip and, well, I've got some chips sitting there, these aren't DRAM, but they'll do. So you clip it on like that, okay? And then that then basically brings out, so you can hook these up to like a PCB or some test leads or whatever you're gonna use. And then it means you can probe this, clip it on and test it. What I was thinking is I could use this to hook into circuitry. So if you're doing in-circuit testing, you need a clip to get onto it, don't you? So the plan for the project is to basically use this to clip onto in-circuit DRAM chips and test them in-circuit with my tester, but not in the traditional thought of, you know, supplying it with signals and seeing what happens. This is to actually do it a different way. All will be revealed when I do my project. This is from Element 14, I think. Oh dear. Okay, more of the same issue as I've had recently. So it's just some more capacitors, axial capacitors, and um, what we got here, 105 degree rated, and 220 microfarad, 63 volt, 50 volt, 22 microfarad, and 63 volt, 22 microfarad again. All right, so, They've got notes on the invoice saying once socks are gone, there'll be no more. So I'm getting concerned about these actual caps now because it looks like they're no longer going to be stocking them. Or either the manufacturers decided to stop manufacturing completely, or anyone falling is not going to stock them anymore. I can understand why there's not going to be a huge demand for these things. It's only older equipment which use them, so yeah, it's a bit of a problem, I think, because I might actually need to spend some money and stock up on whatever they've got left before they're all gone, because I use these things a fair bit, and those old repairs they are old gear. You need them. Now, the mystery box. So this is from Fluke, as you can see right here. So I actually contacted, well, I made contact with my contact at Pomona. Does that make sense? So I, I had an interaction with Pomona last year, maybe end of year before that and they sent me some equipment to look at now I've got this like um, for example oh, they sent me the screwdriver set for example and some test leads and all sorts of bits and things and like the leads I'm using multimeter here right these things here they sent me those I thought I'd get in contact with them reason being that I've been doing reviews recently on these budget multimeters And I was using some of these probes like these little um, probes like this, but mine are getting quite old now. And I, th I thought I'd have a look and get in some more. And I know that Pomona have these, so I contacted them. But whilst I was emailing, I sort of said, hey, you know, actually, you know, I've been I'm doing these moderate reviews. So they've sent me a multimeter and some more probe kits. Check these out. So they sent me to Fluke 107. My contact is at Pomona, but Pomona is like a sister company of Fluke. They're all sort of joined together. So they sent me some Pomona cables and stuff, you know, Pomona's known to be in really good quality. And a little Fluke multimeter. Now, I believe there's some other stuff coming. They may have shipped it separately, I don't know. Um, that happened before, but there's supposed to be a few things coming. So the idea is I'm gonna get this multimeter here. This is a low cost Fluke, right? This is like the entry level kind of thing. 
So this is the one most hobbyists will probably get if they're going to get Fluke or something like it. And the idea is to actually do some reviews on this. I'm going to actually chuck out my calibrator, check out my references like I've been doing for the budget multimeters, so those ones from China. I'm going to run this through the same tests and see how it goes to show a difference in quality. Obviously I'll be doing a teardown as well and I expect mechanically this will be superior, greatly superior to the ones I've been showing so far. Because, you know, it's fluke. They're known for being bulletproof. I expect good things from this. So I'll be doing reviews on this and I'll be doing videos on this and all these cables. I'll be looking at these, doing a proper review video on these. That's nice. Look at this pack here. All these different probes in here, different adapters. Beautiful. Which kit was this one? Um, I forgot what it's called now. Oh, it's on the back probably, on the front. Deluxe Electronic DMM Test Lead Kit. Very nice. So you go, that's all the stuff has got inside it. Heaps of stuff. So this is going to be really handy. So thank you very much for Pomona for sending this to me, no cost. And also Fluke, sister company, sending this one to me as well. So I'm looking forward to playing with these. And also you've got this lead here, which is Vision Electronic Pro Kit. This is a special one. So I'll be doing reviews on all these, so watch out for those videos coming up in the very near future. Quite excited about this stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Again, thanks for Pomona and Fluke for sending those to me. Don't forget to click like and subscribe to make sure you see these videos, especially these things when I do these. This will be an interesting one, definitely. Thanks to my Patreon supporters, if anyone supports me. Check out the playlist at the end, down here, here, subscribe link up here, and Patreon link about there. Catch you later. Bye.